The Collective Security Treaty Organization in the near future will be able to participate in UN peacekeeping operations, says a political observer Gaziz Abishev. According to the expert, CSTO is a significant military power and it would be able to operate in regions where the sides of conflicts have no face in other global alliances. The origins of the organization can be traced to the Collective Security Treaty signed in 1992 in Uzbekistan. In 2002, it was turned into CSTO, a military alliance. With such formation, the fragmental development of military cooperation between post-Soviet states was transformed into full-scale cooperation. The January 2022 events in Kazakhstan boosted the popularity of CSTO, which for the first time in its history stepped in with its peacekeeping mission. What is CSTO today? How the world sees these organization and issues still remain unsolved for state members? Gaziz Abishev has the answers in an interview to our reporter Dorian Isagulov. Okay, Gaziz, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let me start from this uh, question. What is uh, CSTO today and how the world sees this organization? Well, after the fall of uh, USSR, uh, of course, there, w there were some remain, uh, remains of its military structure and at that time the uh, CSTO were, was created because it was necessary for Russia to uh, keep control the military infrastructure around its border on Eurasian heartland. Uh, 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 firstly and secondly, for the small independent new, newly created republics it was necessary to be under the uh, Russian nuclear umbrella uh, to be safe because we all feared that uh, the enemies from outside would start to attack the small new independent republics. That's why uh, CSTO was cre created. Mm, and uh, what is CSTO today? How the world sees this organization? Well, it's like, well, how a world sees it, uh, we need to admit that CSTO right now is a military uh, bloc uh, led by Russia and uh, uh, Kazakhstan and others uh, interested because it's, it, it's a sort of defense. Uh, for example, for us, if for example from the south some radical, uh, radical groups from Afghanistan or other places would try to attack Kazakhstan, of course the the joint forces would defend the, our territory and of course it's also, um, it also applies to Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Uh, firstly and secondly for, for Russia it's a matter of prestige uh, because Russia wants to be like a United States, the head of military bloc, military alliance uh, from diplomatic, economic and military perspective is prestigious thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people say that uh, CSTO is some kind of our analog of NATO. Is it true? And if it's not, uh well, it's it's sort of anal uh, analog, but it's very very small. Uh, I mean, 20, mm -hmm. 20 times smaller than uh, NATO because NATO uh, uh, actually consists of uh, about thirty countries, and of course, uh, mm -hmm. inside NATO you have three uh, nuclear powers like United States. Uh, United States, uh, France and, and uh, United Kingdom and of course others also uh, whether it's Germany, Turkey or Canada are also quite a strong powers themselves uh, but here in CSTO we have only five members uh, um, and, uh, and also we have a, only one uh, strong power uh, and 90% uh, of its military power is, is, is Russia. That's why it's, I mean, asymmetrical uh, structure. Mm -hmm. uh, what issues still uh, remain unresolved within the CSTO? Well, we know that there are some contradictions, between, territorial contradictions between Kyrgyzstan and uh, Tajikistan, which are both members of CSTO. And also we know that uh, uh, most of countries of CSTO actually uh, actually recognized the territorial int integrity of Azerbaijan. That's why this uh, dispute over uh, um, Nagorno-Karabakh was such a, uh, such a, um, I mean, cruel uh, for Armenia because uh, Nagorno-Karabakh um, is a part of Azerbaijan and, and uh, uh, Kazakhstan, Moscow and others never rejected this idea. So uh, right now um, Armenia offended by that but 
what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. How do you think, will uh, CSTO ever be able to participate in a United Nations peacekeeping operations like NATO does? Well, I think it's, it, it's quite possible, but not, not right now. If we are ready, uh, we have enough military force probably somewhere in the world, whether it's Africa, Asia or, or uh, Middle East. Uh, we're able to be a you know, peaceful uh, peacekeeping forces because, for example, in some areas of the world, uh, the conflicting uh, sites, uh, one of conflicti conflicting sites or both, they probably don't trust collective West and they, they are able to trust CSTO because we are flexible on the international arena.